guys, and welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. Today, I wanted to talk about how to get your homeschool teenager involved in things outside of the home. I know we've all heard that myth that homeschool students aren't as socialized as their public school counterparts. And while those of us who have been homeschooling long term know that that is a myth and our kids are perfectly well socialized, I think there are still a lot of concerns from parents out there about what to do during those teenage years. How do we give our kids experiences? maybe not exactly like the ones we had as teenagers, but some of the opportunities and experiences that we got to have that we really enjoyed and we don't want to see them miss out on. Uh, There's also parents who have been commenting on homeschooling groups about uh, their kids just not showing any interest in doing anything outside the home or ones who are pulling their students out to homeschool for the first time during the high school years. And they're just trying to make that adjustment something that is a little bit easier for their student. And finding activities they can participate in outside the home is one of the ways you can do that. So when I think of activities outside the home, I kind of categorize them. I think of educational opportunities, interest-based opportunities, sports, work, and social. And so today I just want to talk about some of the different ways that you can work with your homeschool teen to try to find things that might get them involved beyond the home. So education is a natural place to begin, and co-ops are probably the thing that most homeschooling families are familiar with. A co-op can be anything from just one or two families getting together, whether that's weekly or monthly or quarterly, to cover a particular topic or a book or a course, or it can be something that's more formalized. For example, we have several co-ops in our area. I think last count there were three or four where you pay to have your student attend. There's someone who is teaching a particular class or course, They attend certain days of the week with other homeschooling students. And that is certainly something you could look into for your high school age homeschooler. One of the nice things about co-ops is that you can tend to look for classes that would be either more difficult for you to teach at home or courses that you just don't feel comfortable teaching. For example, one of our co-ops offers quite a few science courses with labs. Now, I'm perfectly comfortable teaching sciences and labs, but I know there are a lot of homeschooling parents who kind of shy away from that or they just don't feel like they're, they're ready to teach that subject on their own. And so those kids will attend for that particular course. Um, another great example would be speech class. Speech is an important thing to learn, right? You need to know how to talk to people, how to put together a presentation, and you need to learn how to talk and present to different types of groups. It's just not a very effective course to teach in homeschool uh, for our homeschool at least, because the only person they would be talking to is me. (laughs) And there's just um, not a lot of experience gained from just giving a speech to mom. So speech is definitely one of those classes that we kind of start to look at co-ops for because the kids will get a chance to talk to a group of peers. And that's just a very different learning experience for them. So that's just one of the examples of courses you could look for in a co-op. There are also some co-ops that will have opportunities for things like band or choir, and I'll talk a little bit more about those when we get to interest-based activities. But unless you have a large family, and you know we are not the Von Trapp family singers, and we are not the Partridge family, there are not enough of us to have a band or a choir. So if that was something either of my kids were interested in, it just wouldn't work here at home. Another educational-based activity you can do is study groups. If you know other homeschooling families with teenagers around your child's age who are doing similar courses, You could certainly organize to have the kids get together maybe once a week or once a month and kind of do like a study group where they're sharing information, quizzing each other, kind of practicing for different things. Not only is it a great way for you to get to know other homeschooling moms and get a chance for you to have an opportunity to sit down and talk with them, but it also gets the kids used to working together as a group, you know, what it means to, you know, be a part of a study group, because that is something that they will likely experience if they're going off to college. And last but not least, there is the dual enrollment option. Some students will do a dual enrollment course that is all online. And while they're not interacting in person daily with other classmates or with professors, they are communicating a lot of times online. A lot of courses do discussion boards where they are, you know, responding to other classmates. Your student has to get used to talking to the professor. Um, maybe going in for office hours and things like that, talking to them or to a TA. 
or if your student does an in-person dual enrollment course, they are you know, going to have to work with the other students in the class and you know, directly with the professor. So that will definitely give them an opportunity to kind of get outside the home, maybe start testing the waters of college um, and getting a feel for you know, what's coming next after their homeschool years. So the next category is work, which should be pretty self-explanatory. You could encourage your teenager to go out and apply and get a job. In our home, um, working is going to be a non-negotiable. Um, my kids, if they would like to drive a car, are going to need to pay for their own gas and their own car insurance. So whether they decide to pursue things like babysitting on a regular basis or doing yard work on a regular basis or applying for a job with a business, they are going to need to work if they want the privilege of driving. And in fact, both of my kids are pretty eager to get jobs. Uh, my oldest has already started doing babysitting for the last year, year and a half. Um, my son is always looking for opportunities where he can do kind of more um, involved yard projects and things like that for me to earn some money. And he is counting down the days until he's old enough to apply at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> that's, that's his goal. Whereas my, my older one... Um, kind of uh, is thinking about it a little more deeply in terms of like what types of places would she be interested in working and what would work best with her schedule with sports and things like that. So she's definitely kind of taking the time to evaluate where would be the best places for her to apply. But jobs provide a great opportunity for your students to gain confidence and a lot of personal growth. They have to go out and they have to do an interview. Um, they may have to, you know, fill out the application, provide a resume. They've got to work with customers. They've got to work with a boss. You know, there's somebody else that they have account, you know, that they're accountable to when they're doing a job. And so it does really bring a lot of people out of their shells when they're working that first job. Uh, they also have the opportunity to make friends with new coworkers, um, get to know other people. And it's a great way just to kind of build those social skills. Number three is interest-based activities. So in my mind, this would be things like students who are interested in drama, art, music, band. Again, some things that would be a little harder to really cultivate for your student just within the confines of your own homeschool. With art, yes, they could do an online art class. They could be creating art at home. But having a brother who is an artist, I know that he gained the most growth when he started to be around other artists getting a chance to look at their work, find out what things they're doing, and then start incorporating new ideas into his own artwork. So definitely consider looking at art courses your student can take, or if there are any art groups that your student can be involved in. Uh, we have a really cool facility here in our city where artists can basically rent a table space on a monthly basis, and they can leave all of their supplies there, they can work on projects there, there's lots of open hours. And so you can go when you rent a table space and you can work on your stuff. You can sit and talk with the other artists who are there. And there's all different types of artists at this facility. There are painters, there are sculptors, there are metal workers, jewelry makers. Um, there are, are people who do drawings. I, it's just, pr it's pretty incredible. And we've gotten a chance to kind of go and visit it a few times with my brother. But it is just a really cool place for artists to get together and really learn from one another. Uh, you could also try to introduce them to people who run smaller art galleries in town, see if they are doing any community art shows that your student can be involved in. That again gives them a chance to start talking to business owners and gallery owners and other artists who are going to be a part of those gallery displays. If you have a student who's interested in drama, definitely look for different drama groups in your area. Depending on their age, there might be a youth theater they can be involved in or a community theater that needs teenage aged actors um, or maybe something where there are summer performances that your student can be more actively involved in. It's just a great chance to get them again, working in a group with some new people, learning some new skills and building that confidence level up even higher. With band and choir, you kind of need people, right, to make a band or a, or a choir. Depending on where you're at, the opportunities may vary. Maybe your church has band and choir opportunities that your student can get involved in. Uh, we have a small music group. We have a choir. We have a bell choir. They're always looking for extra mus musicians at our church. And so they encourage people, no matter you know what their age, to get involved in those things. 
We also have a co-op in our area that specifically has a band class. So you get students of different ages learning the instruments, learning how to play together in a band. And then we have some community choirs and some com community bands that high schoolers can be involved in as well. So look around in your area and see what types of things there are. If you're in a smaller town or if um, you don't find a lot of opportunities, you know, real close to where you live, you may have to branch out a little bit and try to find what's, you know, in the next town or the next uh, nearest city to you. But there are opportunities out there if you will take the time to just kind of look for them. Okay, probably the biggest one for our family is sports. So I've mentioned a few times my kids play basketball and they both golf. Now, golf is definitely one of those sports that's not really about, you know, getting to know a whole lot of people. They have a golf coach. Um, they spend a lot of time during the spring, summer, and fall out on the golf course and at tournaments. But their golf coach has been really great about trying to get them together for practice rounds with other golfers that he coaches. So sometimes my daughter will get a call and say, hey, I've got three of my other high school girls who are going to go out and play 18 holes. Would you like to go and play with them? And so while it's not a social event, you know, they're not sitting there chit-chatting the whole way on the course, they do get to know each other um, a little bit more along the way of playing. And you just get used to what it's like to have a competitor of a similar age there with you the whole time that you're playing. And so for um, their golf game, that definitely improves that. Um, they've both also gotten really good at talking to older adults because, you know, when you see teenagers out on the golf course in the middle of the day, a lot of, um, a lot of the older golfers want to come over and ask them questions and you know, check out how they're playing and things like that. So they've definitely got an opportunity to talk to people and meet people that way. Um, and it's even been a great way to make a couple of business contacts because a lot of the people who are out there um, or members of these courses are business owners. And so it is a potential way to get in for a job in the future. So, um, but as far as sports go, you can get your child involved in kind of any extent that you want. Maybe they just want to casually play sports, and that might mean just signing up for like intramural leagues, maybe through your local YMCA or Boys and Girls Club. Um, my son goes to the Y quite a bit, and he has made a couple of friends who get together a few evenings a week, and they go to, you know, some go to public school, some are homeschool. They get together and they work out together. You know, they'll lift weights, they'll run. Um, there is a men's league basketball a few nights a week at our local Y. They'll sign up and they'll play with that. And he could be there for three, four hours in an evening, getting the opportunity to get some good exercise, but also to, um, you know, hang out and socialize with this group of friends that he has. Uh, so that's kind of a casual example. Um, you may have a student who wants to play a sport more seriously, and you might look at club sports. Um, there are club sports for soccer now, baseball, basketball, volleyball. I mean, the list is kind of endless. Swimming. Uh, club sports do tend to be a little more intense. And they do tend to be quite a bit more expensive. So if you do have a student who is seriously considering, um, you know, like they really want to pursue this sport, they want it to be something, you know, that they're getting scholarships for, maybe doing in college, and you do a club sport, just bear in mind that there's usually a good cost associated with that, both in your time and in money, you know, and, and travel and things like that. So you can look at club sports and getting them involved in that in that way. You can also look for homeschool-based leagues. Whether you're looking for secular leagues or Christian-based leagues, you can certainly take a look for those. What's available in your area and how big those organizations are will largely depend on where you live. We live in a fairly good-sized city. Um, as far as basketball goes, there are two main homeschool basketball teams in our area. Uh, we're part of a Christian homeschool basketball league which is one of the things I was really looking for, even though we have lots of different Christian denominations um, represented in our basketball team, the, the way that they lead the team is fantastic. Um, you know, our students are, or our players are um, always circling up before games and they're praying. They are really encouraging character development with the kids. After practices, the, the players themselves will lead devotions. They take turns leading a devotion, which, is fantastic. You know, not only are they doing devotion with other peers, but they're getting a chance to learn some leadership skills as far as how to lead those. And all of my kids' best friends, like their greatest friendships have all grown out of the basketball teams that they've been a part of. And so we just couldn't be happier with being a part of that. So you can certainly look for homeschool basketball, well, any homeschool sport league 
that might be available in your area. I will say again, depending on where you live, do be prepared to budget money aside, not only for the cost of being a part of these leagues, but for travel. Uh, because we only have two homeschool basketball teams in our area, we travel a lot for games. Sometimes those drives are 30 minutes, sometimes they're an hour, sometimes they're two hours. So we do have to kind of plan our time and our travel budget based on that. We, in fact, are getting ready to go away for a three-day tournament where we'll be, you know, in Indianapolis for multiple games. So we have to, of course, plan for budgets for food and hotel and gas and things like that. So just something to think about as your student is participating in sports, but there are just so many different ways you can get them active in that way. So the last category that I have is social-based activities. I'm a huge proponent of kids getting outdoors, getting out in nature, hiking, camping, you know, learning outdoor skills. Um, I am a scout leader, so I have had the opportunity to do tons of outdoor stuff with the girls that I lead. And both of my kids have been involved since they were very, very young in programs that do that for them. So you could look for scouting groups in your area, uh, you know, whether you're looking at Trail Life, American Heritage Girls, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, you know, whichever one that you're interested in, or if there are other ones that are in your area. Um, just because your student is older doesn't mean that these programs won't still have some amazing opportunities for them. In fact, I have a group of 54 girls currently, um, and over half of those in my group are middle school or high school aged. And the reason why we are able to keep that many older girls interested in the program is because we do a ton of outdoor activities. We go camping multiple times. We do a lot of travel. My daughter and I are actually traveling with our group to Europe this summer, which is pretty exciting. So definitely look for those great opportunities uh, for your students. We have a lot of homeschooling families in our group, and a lot of them have said that they pursued this because they wanted their girls to have a chance to make friendships with new people and outside just their immediate family group or their immediate neighborhood. Church youth group is another opportunity you can look at. If your own church doesn't have a youth group program for your students age group, take a look around and see what other churches in the area have. My church doesn't have youth group for high schoolers, but there are other Lutheran churches in our city that do have that and they don't require them to be members to be a part of the youth group. They simply want to have the opportunity to get as many of these students together as possible, preach the word to them, have them grow in their faith, and it gives them an opportunity, again, to meet some new people, um, to do some more deeper Bible study with peers, get a chance to do service work, and just have opportunities that they wouldn't otherwise have. So definitely checking out church youth groups is a great option. And one of my fondest memories from my high school years was attending dances. I loved planning to go to prom and picking out the dress and doing the hair. And we had Morp, which was like, you know, our backwards prom. We had homecoming. We had winter formal. And I just loved it. And I know when we were kind of getting towards the high school years, that was one of the things that I was worried that my kids would miss out on. I'm like, oh, man, she's not going to get a prom. Ah, but we have a couple of homeschool groups in our area that actually organize dances for homeschoolers. Because really anybody can rent a facility that could host a prom. Anybody can hire a DJ and arrange decorations. And so there are these homeschooling groups that actually put together homeschool dances. Um, I know for sure they have fall dances, they've got winter formals, and then they do have a prom at a really beautiful facility here in our town. And so that will give both of my kids the opportunity to attend those if it's something that they want to do. Um, so you should look around and see if something like that is offered in your area. If it's not, maybe it's time to get together with some other homeschooling families that you know and see about organizing one. You know, it's just as simple as getting a place rented and hiring a DJ and then getting the word out. Um, just like a high school prom, the, the homeschool proms in our area, they sell tickets, so there's a certain cost, and that helps pay for the event and the DJ and food and whatever it is that they have there. And it's just um, a really, you know, cool thing to be able to organize and have for these high school age homeschoolers. So that's just a couple of ideas on how you can get your homeschool teenager involved with things outside of the home. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. Don't forget, this is the last week to enter in my Guest Hollow Government and Econ giveaway. I will link that video down below where I introduce a brand new curriculum from Guest Hollow 
talking about their government econ personal finance course for high schoolers. I have a giveaway associated with that video. So if you go check that out, you can enter still this week. I will be announcing the winner next Monday. Thanks so much for joining me today, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.